Okay, I have an original effect to share with you today. It involves the Jack of Hearts, who has a rather strange idiosyncrasy. For some reason or another, the Jack of Hearts loves leftovers. In fact, he loves them more than the original meal. Okay, so that sounds like a very strange quirk to have. So for this effect, you need seven random cards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven random cards mixed thoroughly by the spectator. Okay, and then have the spectator gather these up and then just deal out into kind of a triangle configuration like this and they can build up the layers in whatever order they would like now there's going to be a lone survivor because we'll have two cards in each pile right so this will be the spectator's special card to remember and it looks like it's the five of spades okay now at this point after the spectator has looked at this card, you don't see it as the performer, they're free to stack it on any one of the three piles. So maybe they'll stack it there. Very good. And then you offer them either one of these piles to stack on top. Maybe they'll stack this one. That's just fine. And then Jack of Hearts can be placed here and have these stacked on top or here and have those stacked on top. So which would you like? You want Jack on the smaller or the larger pile? Larger pile, okay. And then we'll kind of bury him there. And so from here, we're going to be able to see for ourselves kind of the strange preferences of the Jack of Hearts, okay? So as I mentioned, he loves leftovers. But strangely enough, he loves to just make a mess of them and then throw them into a pan, warm them up and eat them as is. Sounds disgusting, doesn't it? Okay, let's do that again. Okay, so the Jack of Hearts loves leftovers. Okay, let's just mix these all up. Throw those on top. Now you can do as many of these as the spectator asks for. Of course, you're just picking up the left pile and making a mess of things according to Jack's directions there. Maybe we'll do one more. Okay. So let's mix our leftovers, however Jack would like, drop them on top. Okay, now note to you as the performer, you can perform as many of those as the spectator asks for, okay? And so once the spectator's convinced that the cards really are beyond the knowledge of anyone, which is really the case here, go ahead and just spell out Jack of Hearts. J-A-C-K, Jack, <laughs> O-F, of H-E-A-R-T-S. Okay, and so what we're going to find is that the Jack of Hearts not only likes leftovers, but he actually likes you. And of course, this is the card the spectator freely arrived at by their free and random selection of seven cards. Okay, so how does this work? A crazy routine here. So here's the Jack of Hearts, the leftover lover. Okay, and then I guess we could even have the same um, spades, wasn't it? Same spectator card here. Um, I just need to show you kind of one subtlety to be aware of, and then everything else is self-working, actually. So when we deal out into three piles of two cards each, Okay, it is true the spectator can put their card anywhere. I'll, we'll leave it face up for now. They can put it anywhere. Maybe they put it there this time. It is true they can stack either pile on top. That's all true. Now, at this point, it is the case that the jack can be placed on top of either one. So if it's placed here, you do stack the other pile to kind of bury it. If it's placed here, you stack the other pile on top to bury it, okay? So there's kind of a uniformity of action uh, that really should not make the spectator suspicious in any way. Um, now in the performance, the spectator supposedly asked for it here on the bigger pile, and then we buried the jack like that, okay? So that is one possibility. If that happens, just proceed as I did in the performance. If for whatever reason they decide to put it here and then stack the bigger pile on top, which is fine, we'll just have to make one small adjustment. 
what you need to do here. And in fact, let me just show you why you need to do it so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay. So the secret is we really do need their card where the jack is right now. And this card would have been there. So think about it. So if we had put these on top, if Jack had been put here and those two on top, five of spades would have been second from the bottom, which is where we need it, okay? But the other stacking leads to this situation right here, where now second from the bottom is that Jack of hearts, okay? So if you just look at the packet here, there's a symmetry where if we just reverse the order of the cards, we'll put them in the arrangement that we need to succeed at this routine, okay? So if for whatever reason, they put that bigger pile on top of Jack, as we've done here, all you need to do is something called, or there's other ways to do it, but I call it the first shall be last, the last shall be first. So it's really just a packet reversal, kind of hidden a little bit. So what you do is you begin to deal out into piles until the spectator says stop. And then maybe you go on to the next pile like that. Maybe they say stop there, that's fine. Then go on to the next pile. Maybe they say stop there. And then the next pile like that, okay? So it's called the first shall be last and the last shall be first because the last pile dealt is the first one now to be picked up and stacked in opposite order. So all of that action, with a little bit of thought, you'll realize it's just a packet reversal. Okay, so now it puts their card in the special position that we need, namely third position from the bottom, okay? So you may have to do that adjustment depending on whether the spectator stacks that larger pile on the jack of hearts. Okay, and then everything else is as I've sh shown you here. It works every time. So it really is. Now, one of the secrets to what's going on here, let me just show you. In fact, you'll see it now. Um, that We always go with the left. That's why it's called leftovers. You go with the left pile, leftovers. You can mix these all you want. Well, can you see why maybe that's the case? Well, it's because the five of spades ends up always being in the right-hand pile. And it's always third from the bottom like that. So there's two cards below it. So it doesn't matter what we do with these. The five of spades will never be in here. You stack that on top. I'll show you again. Okay. So the five of spades is in a fixed point position relative to this left-right dealing. It just stays there as long as you stack the left pile on top of the right. Okay, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, and then for the spelling, that's where we need, as you'll see, that's where we need their card to be because if I spell J A C K, drop the rest on top, O F, drop the rest on top, and then hearts, H E A R T S, it will always, always, always bring the spectator card to the top. And so you can say, boy, not only does the Jack of Hearts like leftovers, he likes you. And then you kind of reveal the identity of that top card, which is guaranteed to be the spectator's card. Okay, so this is a, a simple, fast little mathematical routine that really makes people smile because, boy, they just see it as impossible as they're scrambling that left pile and then stacking that on top. There's just no way for anyone to know or be able to keep track of their noted card at the beginning. Okay, well, thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.